Hello, and welcome to this SKC training event. I am Nicole Zovac, a technical product specialist, and I am pleased to present this webinar on respirable dust samplers. This webinar will first define respirable dust, and then we'll cover performance criteria for samplers along with available sampler options. Respirable dust, more generally described as respirable particulate matter, consists of small particles which may penetrate down to the lower gas exchange region of the lung and contribute to lung disease. If you are new to air sampling, you may wonder why or when you use a respirable dust sampler to evaluate exposure levels. Simply put, respirable dust samplers are used because the occupational exposure limit is issued as respirable dust and the published sampling methods from OSHA or NIOSH or other agencies specify respirable samplers. Respirable dust samplers are technically known as size selective samplers because they can separate out the small respirable dust particles from the larger particles in the dust cloud and collect them onto a filter. Collecting larger, non-respirable particulates would inflate results of the sample, overestimating exposures. Most industrial hygiene organizations and standard-setting bodies around the world have come to consensus and adopted the performance criteria specified in ISO Standard 7708. Again, if you are new to air sampling, take special note of this standard. This is a very important standard for health-related dust sampling in the workplace. This standard is also known as the ISO-CEN convention. ISO stands for the International Standards Organization, and CEN stands for the Committee for European Normalization, which reflects the fact that this is a global standard. In the U.S., the entire ISO 7708 standard has been adopted by ACGIH and is described in the Appendix on Particle Size Selective Sampling in the TLV booklet. There are also TLVs issued for all size fractions of particulate matter described in ISO 7708, including respirable particulate matter. U.S. NIOSH has also adopted ISO 7708 performance criteria in their respirable dust methods, and U.S. OSHA has adopted the ISO 7708 criteria for respirable dust samplers in their 2016 final rule on respirable crystalline silica. Here, you can see the ISO 7708 performance criteria for respirable dust samplers. The criteria is essentially a collection efficiency curve that specifies the efficiency of the sampler for particles of designated sizes. As you can see, the sampler must be much more efficient in collecting smaller particles than larger particles. Sampling efficiency drops to near zero when particles approach 10 micron in aerodynamic diameter. There are a lot of data points on the collection efficiency curve for respirable dust samplers. For simplicity's sake, the industrial hygiene profession normally refers to only one data point on the curve called the 50% cut point. The 50% cut point is the particle size that the sampler collects with 50% efficiencies. Looking at the ISO 7708 curve shown, you can see that the size of dust that samplers must collect with 50% efficiency is 4 microns. In other words, 4 microns is the 50% cut point according to ISO 7708. Particles smaller than 4 microns are collected with an efficiency greater than 50%, and larger particles are collected with an efficiency less than 50%. Next, let's review the types of respirable dust samplers that are currently available, starting with traditional samplers. The traditional respirable dust sampler that has been used for decades in the industrial hygiene profession is a cyclone. Cyclones function like a centrifuge. 
they use rapid circulation of air to separate the small particles from the larger particles in the dust cloud when connected to a sampling pump that is pulling at the designated flow rate. Here's how cyclones work. The pump draws air in through a slit on the side of the device. This creates rapid circulation of air in a cyclonic action. Large particles fall into the cap, also known as the grit pot shown here in red at the bottom of the cyclone and are discarded. Small respirable particles are thrown up by cyclonic action onto the filter for analysis. It is very important that you keep the grip pot on the cyclone during sampling. A common mistake for those new to air sampling is to remove it during the sampling period. One of the first respirable dust cyclones to be used in industrial hygiene is the 10 millimeter nylon door oliver cyclone. In the US, this cyclone has been used since the 1970s by OSHA inspectors. It has long been reported that this cyclone suffers from orientation bias and electrostatic charge issues that may cause particles to stick to the side of the device. SKC does not sell the cyclone, but it is still commercially available from other vendors and is widely used. The designated flow rate to meet the ISO 7708 criteria with this cyclone is 1.7 liters per minute. Alternatively, the SKC Aluminum Cyclone offers users some unique advantages. The metal construction eliminates static electricity concerns. There is a larger collection area since the cyclone is inserted into the middle ring of a three-piece filter cassette. And a calibration adapter eliminates the need to use a calibration jar. Finally, compared to the door oliver, the higher flow rate of 2.5 liters per minute enhances the limit of detection. The aluminum cyclone is listed in the OSHA final rule on silica and NIOSH respirable dust methods. The aluminum cyclone is not an option for underground coal mines because alloys such as aluminum are considered a spark hazard if rubbed up against rusty steel pipes. So the GS3 Cyclone was developed and brought to SKC by West Virginia University for coal mining applications and others. The conductive plastic construction eliminates static electricity concerns and it is not a spark hazard. The three inlets overcome orientation bias reported in the Dura Oliver. This cyclone is used at a higher flow rate of 2.75 liters per minute to enhance detection, and it is also inserted into the middle ring of a three-piece cassette for a larger collection area. As of the time of this recording, US MSHA has not adopted the ISO 7708 criteria for respirable dust samplers. Therefore, to meet the existing MSHA requirements, SKC offers a Dora Oliver equivalent called the GS1 Cyclone. Like the Dora Oliver, the GS1 has a single inlet slit. It is used at 3 liters per minute to achieve the 50% cup point of 3.5 micron specified in the, o in the MSHA silica standard. The GS1 can also be used at 1.7 or 2 liters per minute for use with a diesel particulate matter cassette frequently used in mines. SKC Limited in the UK manufactures a Higgins dual style cyclone that is available in a 25 or 37 millimeter design. A flow rate of 2.2 liters per minute was previously specified by SKC to meet the ISO 7708 criteria, but a 2018 study by the Health and Safety Laboratory in the UK indicates the plastic cyclone oversamples at this flow rate relative to the criteria. A flow rate of 3.0 liters per minute is now specified to match ISO 7708. The test report is available upon request. Here's an important note for beginners. All cyclones are not created equal. 
be sure to set the flow rate of the pump to the flow rate specified by the manufacturer of the cyclone you are using. Otherwise, the collected data may be in error. Here, you can see the designated flow rates with various types of cyclones to meet the ISO 7708 criteria. This slide recaps the important tips for sampling with the SKC Aluminum or GS Cyclones. Make sure you load the filter into a three-piece cassette. Remove the entire inlet piece, not just the red-blue plugs, and insert the cyclone into the middle ring. Calibrate the pump at the designated flow rate. After sampling, remove the cyclone from the filter cassette being very careful not to invert it. Recap the cassette with the inlet piece for transport to the lab. And make sure you clean the cyclone before reuse. Here are some tips for calibration. If you are using the SKC aluminum cyclone, you can use a handy calibration adapter to attach the cyclone to the pump calibrator. The adapter will fit both the 25 millimeter and the 37 millimeter cyclones. Neither the SKC GS cyclones nor the Nylon Door Oliver cyclone have a calibration adapter. You will need to place these cyclones into a calibration jar to measure the flow rate. Here you can see some tips for post sample cleaning. It is important to clean the cyclone after each use, otherwise dust on the inside of the cyclone from the previous sample can affect the collection efficiency of the cyclone for the next sample. Next, let's review some newer designs of respirable dust samplers that have emerged in recent years. Multi-dust foam discs were developed by the UK Health and Safety Laboratory to allow for the simultaneous sampling of respirable and inhalable dust. The foam discs are inserted into the inlet of the IOM inhalable sampler. The foam scrubs out the larger particles so the dust collected into the filter is only the smaller respirable particles. Dust on the foam plus the filter represents the inhalable fraction. Here, you can see the certificate of conformity that comes with every box of multi-dust foam discs produced at SKC Limited in the UK. This certificate shows on the right-hand side the collection efficiency curve for the discs in comparison to BS EN481 standard. The specifications in BS EN481 are the same as those in ISO 7708. Next, I would like to discuss a new respirable dust impactor that has been hugely popular with industrial hygienists in the U.S. The parallel particle impactors, or PPIs, are available in reusable aluminum or single-use disposable plastic. Most users prefer the plastic models since no assembly is required and they are easier to use. The SKC PPI samplers are described in the 2016 U.S. OSHA final rule on respirable crystalline silica. Specifically, the Federal Register states that in addition to traditional cyclones, there are also personal impactors available for use at flow rates from 2 to 8 liters per minute that have been shown to conform closely to the ISO CEN convention. These personal impactors are the SKC PPI samplers. Here's how they work. The PPI impactors have four internal pre-oiled plates that scrub out larger particles that are drawn into the device by the pump. The impactor plates are sonically welded into place by SKC and they require no assembly by you. As the pump draws the air into the PPI, 
larger particles are scrubbed out onto the plates and the smaller respirable particles are collected onto the PVC filter for analysis as usual. The disposable PPI samplers are designed for one-time use to ensure that the impactor plates do not become overloaded with dust. Tests indicate that the plates can hold up to 6.8 milligrams before they will no longer separate out the respirable dust particles. Here you can see the performance of the three models of PPI samplers, 2, 4, and 8 liters per minute compared to the ISO 7708 criteria. The data indicates that their performance is a precise match to the criteria. This is because the samplers are new and they were designed to match the ISO 7708 criteria. Note that the PPI performance data was published in a peer-reviewed journal, the Journal of Physics. Copies of the journal article are available from SKC upon request. Single-use disposable PPI models are available for use at either 2, 4, or 8 liters per minute. By far, the most popular model is the PPI for use at 2 liters per minute. Higher flow models allow you to collect enough dust on the filter for quantitative analysis even for shorter sample durations. It is a good idea to discuss sample duration with your lab based on the flow rate to be used, expected concentrations in air, and the laboratory's limit of detection. One of the advantages of the disposable PPIs is the handy calibration adapter. This eliminates the hassle of using a calibration jar. Note, however, that the calibration adapter is only available for the disposable PPI and not the reusable model. Industrial hygienists have shared with SKC that the biggest advantage of the PPI is that you can tip it over without invalidating your sampler. With cyclones, if you tip them over with the cyclone still attached to the filter cassette, large particles in the grit pot will land on the filter invalidating the sample. This can happen by the worker during their job activities or in sample transport. PPI samplers are widely used for silica sampling, but like a cyclone, the PPI can be used for sampling any type of respirable dust. For sampling respirable dust followed by gravimetric analysis, you will need to use a PPI with a pre-weighed filter, which is now available from SKC or your laboratory. Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar and learn about respirable dust sampling. Please visit the SKC website for more training materials and details on SKC samplers. You can email SKC Tech at skcinc.com to get your questions answered by the SKC technical team in Pennsylvania or contact your local SKC representative.